What's going on, people? I have one single promise for you today. And my one promise is this. If you don't know how to build a PC after today, you will. As long as you watch the whole video, then you will. I can promise that if you watch it all. Hey guys, it's Chris with Tech5. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to build a PC. It's Hot Boy GPU Summer, guys, if you didn't know. It is, it's Hot Boy GPU Summer and every tech tuber is claiming that GPU prices are coming down and they're gonna keep coming down. And guys, I hope that that's true. I hope that that's what happens and I hope that you guys are getting the GPUs you want for low prices and MSRP and all of that stuff, guys, because what that means is you guys are getting GPUs, you're building PCs, and guys, that means that this video is relevant. So guys, I am rooting for that. I'm hoping for it. But if you don't know how to build a PC today, guys, I'm gonna be showing you how to Step by step, this isn't gonna be a short one. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build a PC, so if you wanna learn, then watch this video. So let's get into it. But uh, sponsor first. This video is brought to you by YourCDKeys.com. YourCDKeys is a website that provides games and other software for a really good price. And right now, you can get a Windows 10 Pro key for under $17. All you gotta do is apply my special discount code at checkout, receive 20% off, check out securely with PayPal. And once the payment is cleared, you'll be given a code in your account as well as your email. Then all you gotta do is go to your Windows search bar, type activate settings, and type in your key. To learn more, check the links below. Now starting off guys with building a PC, tools are important. Tools are going to be everything. Now guys, I'll just, I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? A regular screwdriver like this little set here, It'll work, it'll get the job done. You can get your PC built with this, but guys, if you want the absolute easiest way to get the job done, that's my recommendation right there, a little power screwdriver, guys. And I'll have links for this so if you wanna go ahead and go with this, guys. It's definitely a big advantage to building a PC because, guys, Screwing in fans is just a terrible thing, and this just makes it so much more convenient. So I highly recommend you guys get you a good set of tools, especially if you're gonna just consistently build. A good set of tools, can't beat it. Okay, so for our first step, guys, we are gonna be getting our motherboard. Now, usually, guys, right out the box, this will have some sort of electrostatic paper, anti-static paper that it'll come in. I don't have it in that because, well, Guys, I just set up this video like five minutes ago and took about it to this PC and I just put it in there. So, you know, this is all staged right now for the video. It's fine. So don't worry about that. Now, a good practice to go ahead and get into is using your motherboard box as like a little build platform if you don't have a little anti-static mat like I do. And guys, just so you know, I do have an anti-static floor. Look at the drip. But I have an anti-static floor and I have an anti-static mat. So guys, ESD can definitely be a problem when you're dealing with your components. So keep that in mind, ESD straps do work. And guys, the, I, you don't have to use them, but if we're being formal about everything, it's recommended. But I'm pretty protected with my anti-static mat and my anti-static floor. So I'm pretty protected there in that case. But getting to the build, we're gonna start with our CPU. So. We're gonna get that. Okay, got our CPU here. We have the 5950X that we're gonna be putting in here today. And voila, there she is, there she blow, 5950X. Now when you're getting your CPU ready for installation, you should have a little latch here if you're dealing with AMD, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get that in the up position while we get ready to put this in. Now, when you're dealing with your CPU, I definitely don't recommend doing this one-handed like I am because, well, these things are very, very delicate, guys. You have pins on the back here, which I'm gonna show you now. These little pins here are very delicate. You do not want to bend these things. So it is very important that you're very careful 
in this process of doing your build. So what you are gonna wanna look for here is the little gold triangle on this CPU. You can see that in the corner there. You're gonna to wanna to match this up with the little triangle that's on the motherboard. So for this motherboard, it is in the top left corner. You can see it there. And we're gonna go ahead and put this CPU in and we're just gonna drop it in. So when you are installing the CPU and you're matching up those corners, make sure that you don't force it in, just line it up and you can just let the CPU fall in just like that. Don't have to force it. And then you're just gonna bring this latch down. So after you've done that, CPU is installed. Next, we're gonna be installing our RAM and we are gonna be in a dual channel setup. So basically what that means is we're gonna be running two sticks of RAM here and we're gonna be taking advantage of the two and the four slot. So we're gonna skip this first slot here. We're gonna use this one. This stick's gonna go in here, skip this slot and stick's gonna go in here. So this is the two and this is the four. So guys, what we want to do to prep these sticks ready for going in, you're going to want to find the little latches here and push them back so they can be open. Some motherboards don't have latches that come back on both of them. This is one of those that just has one latch on one side. So that can be a little bit tricky, but basically what we're doing is just matching up the notches that you see here. You've got a notch here. You've got a notch on the mother on the RAM slot here. So what we're going to do is match that up. And as you can see, when we match those up, we can go ahead and slide down that RAM, go ahead and apply equal pressure, both sides. And then you can go ahead and hear a click. So once you've got that click and you see that this latch has actually came up, you're good on that stick. Then we're going to do the same thing with the other stick. Just match up the notches, get it ready to slide in, drop down, apply equal pressure, should hear a click, bam, bam. And if we're good, latch should have went down. So now that we got our RAM installed, our CPU installed, we have two optional ways to go now. Now we can go into possibly putting this into the case, but we are gonna actually be installing what is called an M.2. And this is going to be our storage that's actually gonna be on our PC. And I recommend if you are going to be using the M.2, you do this all while the board's outside of the case. It makes it much easier to do. Okay, we got our M.2 here. So you can see, little m .2z. Got the Inlin one terabyte NVMe SSD, also known as M.2. And we are going to actually be removing this heat sink that's right here for the M.2. So, so we'll use our handy dandy tool and we'll remove it. And if we got them loose enough, well, it should come off. Now, you should have a thermal pad if you've got a heat sink that looks similar to this. Sometimes they may have uh, plastic on them if you've never used the motherboard before. I definitely have used this, so my thermal pad is not new but it still works just fine. And we're gonna take this M.2, come over here, and it's got a little bitty slot, and you're just gonna to want to slide that boy in. Now, if you don't see, you're gonna be looking for little notches that you're matching up, just the same here. Got a little notch on here, you're matching up notches. So, matching the notch, letting that girl go in, and sticking it. And well, then you'd be good. Now, under normal circumstances, you would use an M.2 screw here and fasten that to the board, but because I have this particular heat sink, it can easily keep this down. Now, this isn't gonna be best practice doing this this way, but guys, um, I don't have an M.2 screw, so I'm just gonna do it this way, and it works just fine. So, I'm cutting corners, and sometimes you can too. Okay, recap, we have the M.2 installed, CPU installed, RAM is installed, so now we are ready to go ahead and get this thing inside of a case. So moving on to the case, it is important that you guys know that not all cases are built for every motherboard. There are different sizes of motherboard and different cases that can actually hold them. Now this particular case is the O11 Mini from Lee & Lee, and it can hold 
pretty much any motherboard. This is an ATX motherboard, which is known as a full-size motherboard, and it will be able to fit in this case. But I caution you guys to be familiar with what case you're looking at and make sure that it can actually support the motherboard that you're trying to put in it. You don't want that problem. Now, another thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is that you familiarize yourself with your case. Not all cases are the same. There are different little nuances to cases. Some come with tempered glass. Some don't have any glass at all. Some, they all look different. And it's just important that you are familiar with how you break down your case and, you know, just being familiar with how everything works, guys. Now, to make it as easy as possible on you when you're getting ready to install your motherboard into your case i suggest that you remove all of your side panels that you remove all of your dust panels and this is a dust panel and you just make sure you have room to work because guys it's much easier to have a clean little workspace here trust me now, before you get too gung-ho in trying to put your case in your motherboard, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have all of your standoffs installed to your case. Depending on the size of your motherboard, this is an ATX motherboard that I'm working with today. So this one is going to have nine standoffs that it actually requires. And you can count those. If you look at your motherboard, you see little holes that look like this. These are where the standoffs are going to line up. So make sure that you have all of the standoffs in here because this is what's going to help protect your board from shorting out and allows it to be grounded. So make sure you have all of your standoffs installed to your case. Now, before we go ahead and drop this boy in here, I want you to be aware of this little cutout that you see here, guys. This is typically where you would put the IO shield. You would go ahead and install that from inside and push it out, and then it would lock into this area. Now for this board, the IO shield is actually attached to the motherboard. So I don't have to do that, but I want you guys to be aware of that because you want to put the IO shield in first before you try to put your motherboard in. So let's go ahead and do that. So moment of truth, motherboard going in. And like I said, guys, you're going to want to stand, line up those standoffs. So here I go trying to do that. IO shields kind of lining up there. And we want to make sure we line up the standoffs and not break anything and voila. we are lined up there and we are lined up here so guys we're going to start putting some screws in here get this bad boy going now i know what you guys are thinking what kind of screws do i use well guys you're going to be looking for some screws that look similar to this you want those little flat top mushroom looking screws these are going to be what you're going to want to use. You should have some in your case uh, accessories and little baggie that came with your case if you bought a new one. These are the screws you're going to be looking for to fasten your motherboard to your case. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we got the motherboard mounted to the case and we're going to be doing something a little bit unconventional here. We're gonna actually be trying to do some of our hookups because, well guys, I can tell you that when you start getting fans and radiators and all those other stuff in here, you start losing room and you kind of make it a lot harder on yourself to get stuff plugged in such as, um, I don't know, the HD audio or the USB that goes right there or the little front, front IO or you know the CPU power. Now you guys might not know what any of that stuff is, but I'm gonna be making it make sense for you and try to make this as smooth sailing for you as possible when you decide to build if you haven't already or don't know how and you want to learn. Whatever your case is, I'm gonna show you. Guys, this is what I recommend you do first. Now every PC case has some sort of front IO and this could be the power switch, a 3.5 millimeter jack, a couple of USBs that is actually physically connected to the case itself. And usually what that does is has a little board that comes into the case and little cables that'll run down that kind of look like this. And what this stuff does is allow the PC case to talk to the motherboard and will allow these little switches here to work. So what we're gonna be doing guys, because this is what helps save us a little bit of room and headache at the end of the build, is be hooking this up to the motherboard 
before we do anything else. Now, when you are going to route these cables, guys, you wanna have some sort of cable management in mind. What I mean by that is just having some sort of route in your mind. And guys, for this HD audio, we are gonna go ahead and go underneath the motherboard here from the back and route this to the front. And from here, guys, we're gonna be looking for the far left here. See this little pins over here? This is where the HD audio is gonna go. And to make sure you go ahead and install this correctly, you're gonna be looking for the little holes that you have here. Now, right now it's kind of shiny, but you see where there's not one that's shining? That's because there's no hole there. So we're gonna be trying to match that up with the little plug here at the far left. Now, so far for me, every motherboard that I've used is actually just uh, let me have the HD audio words up and it's fit in right. So just make sure you don't have a notch there where one's not supposed to be. And as long as you don't, well, it should just go in just fine. And it's in there, it's a snug, so we're good. Now, as I was talking about earlier, the cable management, we wanna try to make sure we hide as much wire as we can. So right there's kinda gonna be the optimal look right there. So it's there, it's plugged in, and it's out of the way, it's clean. So next we're gonna move on to the USB 3.0, and this is what's going to be powering the USBs on your front IO. And well, we're going to route these in the best way possible. Like I said, we're looking for cable management here, and we want to go ahead and get this hookup out of the way. And before we go ahead and route the cable, we're gonna be looking for the port, and the port is gonna look just like this. This is gonna be our USB 3.0. We're gonna be routing the cable and trying to make it fit there. And for this particular case, we got some little slits here that we're gonna actually be taking advantage of to hide with as much cable as we can. So let's do that. All right, it to here. And we go. So we've got a notch here that we're gonna be looking for at the top. Just match up the notch. See that here? We're gonna be matching this notch here. And you wanna be careful with this because you can bend these pins. That ain't what you want to do. That ain't a day you want to have. It's in there. We can see that it's in there. We're good. So last but not least, we got these little guys and these are what are going to allow your PC to actually turn on your PC with the flip of the switch. And if you have other buttons here that are like a reset button, this is what allows those to work. This is what sends that switch to your motherboard to tell it to turn on. And you want to make sure you install these correctly because if you don't, well, your motherboard's not coming on. It's not going to turn on. Your PC's not going to work. Your switch isn't going to work. And you don't want that. And these can get a really kind of confusing. So you want to make sure you defer to your motherboard manual when you're looking at this because they don't always have the same layout. Typically, the bottom right is where you're going to be hooking these up on your motherboard. If you don't hook these up correctly, your motherboard's not turning on. So definitely double check. And they are labeled usually on here and you can, might not be able to see it, but usually they're labeled and you can see where they say little names like power switch or reset or HDD. But just make sure you look at your motherboard. It's much more helpful. Now, because I can't do this one handed and you probably don't have the same motherboard as me anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this real fast, but check your motherboard manual. It will tell you exactly where these go. So I've got mine all plugged in and managed as well as I can out of sight here. And that's what we're going for. And I've got all of my front IO hooked up now, and that's what you're going to want to do. Now, the next thing that I encourage you to do here is hook up your CPU power, or at least get your cables out. Now, this is where you're going to dive into your power supply. But the reason that we're doing this, guys, is when we start putting fans and radiators up here, you start losing out of room and these get really, really hard to reach and plug in stuff. And you don't want to make it more difficult than it already is on yourself. So just hook those up at least. That's not a big issue, the motherboard power, but the CPU power gets to be a real bia bia. So hook it up. Okay guys, so I have my CPU powers here and for my particular one, it does come with eight pins. And you can usually tell these apart from your PCIe ones, the one that go to your graphics card, because they have a little fork off. The ones that go to your graphics card usually do this kind of stuff, a little daisy chain action. We don't do that for the CPU. You're gonna be wanting to look for the single ones here. Double check with your power supply to make sure that actually applies to yours. The manual will tell you if you have to but typically this is how it actually goes. So we're gonna hook these up, run them from the back here, and then we're just gonna feed it through. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick.
And now that we got it ran through here, we're gonna go ahead and do some plugging in. And you can line this up, look for the little notches that your motherboard has where it can click in. You hear that click, you're in good shape. So we got one that takes a four and one that takes an eight. So make sure that you act accordingly, plug in accordingly, and you'll be fine. These can be a little bit annoying to do with this little space, and that's why I recommended you do this now before you have all other sorts of stuff in the way, because it only gets harder. See how much trouble I'm having just doing it with this, this room that I have now. So now for cable management's sake, we want to move stuff out the way. So we're going to do that as much as we can. Okay, so we got that up and out of the way as much as we can. So there we're looking good. So now we can install our CPU cooler. Now for this build, we're gonna be using an AIO and what this is is adds a water cooling effect for our CPU and this has a radiator attached to it. Now, I've already opened this. This isn't brand new. Yours, if you have one, you use one, guys. Well, there's a little bit more steps involved and a little bit more unwrapping to do. I've already done that, so you'll just have to, uh, you know, venture that yourself. So we got the AIO out of the box, and before we go ahead and try to attach the CPU block, which is this thing right here, we are going to go ahead and install our fans to the radiator to try to make it as easy as possible on us guys we're all about working smarter not harder here guys i've been showing you that we're going to continue that trend so we're going to get some fans on here and the fans that we're going to be using today are going to be the uni fan from lee and lee so we'll go ahead and get all those out so we got a lot of fans here but we only need two for this and what we're going to do is actually connect these fans together if you're not familiar with how the lee and lee fans actually work they snap together very convenient, very awesome design. We are going to need to connect two of them. Now, not every fan is gonna be as awesome or as cool as the Lee and Lee fan, but these can be easily connected together. And well, when you do that, it allows the lighting to be synced up and definitely saves on cable here. So we're gonna go ahead and well, mount this on here. Now be sure to check your little baggie that you get with your AIO if you happen to use one. It should have a bunch of screws in there that are going to be what you're gonna need when you're mounting a fan to your AIO. The screws that I'll be using are gonna be the longer screws that this comes with and these are going to be what go through the fan and actually mount to the radiator. So we're gonna go ahead and well, drop all of those in and then screw them. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about the Lee and Lee fan is you want to make sure that you have this exposed. This is how you actually send power to your fan with this little connector here. And if you have this like up here, it's gonna be pretty difficult for you to get that little piece in there. And you don't want that. So we're trying to keep this as easy as possible. So make sure you keep this open if you happen to be using a Lee and Lee fan. So now that we've got our fans mounted to our radiator, we're gonna to have to actually mount our radiator to our case, and we're gonna do that from behind back here. So we're gonna get this thing positioned up where we want it, and we're gonna put some screws in it. So when you are mounting your radiator to your case, you're gonna have little small screws, because keep in mind, you don't want to be puncturing the fins on your radiator, so it's gonna go through your little case brackets here and into these little brackets on the radiator. You don't want the long ones going through here because you can puncture your little radiator fins and that's not a good day. So what we're doing is mounting this radiator. We're just gonna get it in a position we think we like. And we're gonna put a screw in it. Okay, your radiator is mounted. We're coming together here. And now what we need to do is install our CPU block onto our CPU. Now, before we get too crazy and start throwing thermal paste on here, we gotta make sure that we have the right bracket on our CPU and the right mounting mechanism on our motherboard. Now for this particular AIO, I do have the right AMD bracket on here, but this is not the right mounting mechanism. Every AIO should come with their own special one if it doesn't use the default 
mounting mechanism and this one does not so we have to install that. Now as I mentioned every AIO has their own special little mounting mechanism and these are going to be what I'm going to be using for this particular one so I'm going to need to remove these so I can go ahead and install these. And you can do this by just simply taking a screwdriver and hopefully you got like a lazy one like me and just go ahead and take her off. Now I recommend that you do this one side at a time because this is a back plate that can easily fall off if it doesn't have something supporting it. So if I were to take off both sides of these, the back plate here is falling off and that can get annoying. So do one side at a time. And these are just thumb screwed on for this one. So that's my recommendation. Okay, so now that we got the brackets on there, we got the new mounting mechanism on there. I've already installed this bracket on here. So what we need now is some thermal paste. So, uh, let's go. Okay, so I got thermal paste here and science would say that you just need a little bit of dirt. But I'm gonna go ahead and give her a little rice grain. There's different techniques. But maybe I wanna do like a little, little nose too. Little face, little smiley face, cause that's what I want. But seriously, you don't need a lot of thermal paste. It just a little, little rice dot there. It's good. So we got that on there. Now we can go ahead and, well, mount each bad boy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our CPU block on and trying to find the right orientation can be a little annoying, but just, work with a little bit and you can get it down. Just try to make sure you do it evenly when you're coming down, have your mount there, get everything like you like it. You don't need to do any pushing down, but for this block, I have to install it in the way that it says. So make sure you do the same. I've got little springs that I'm putting on here right now. as you can see. And then the piece de resistance, little caps. These are just gonna be thumb screw down. We don't wanna add too much pressure right now because we want to get all of our screws on first. I'm just starting to thread some. So now we've got all four of our hand screws on here and you don't have to add a lot of pressure. You want to do this in an alternating way. So we're tightening over here, bottom left, got that tightened up. So now we're going to go over here, but we don't want to tighten all the way. We want to come down as even as possible, alternating corners. Just giving a few turns. Once you got it hand tight, not strong man hand tight, just a little Gregory hand tight, then you're good. And then for this particular one, this is going to be a fan header. And then we're going to be wanting to look for one that says CPU header. Usually you can find that really close to the CPU up here. It's labeled on your motherboard. If you can't see it, just check your motherboard manual. Make sure you got it on the right one. You're looking for CPU fan. Plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. So for this, you want to try to route your cable as best you can. We're trying to cable manage, like I said. A little difficult right now, because we don't have anything kind of holding it back right there, but we'll make it look better later. And one thing I forgot to mention is airflow. And when you're trying to get your fans set up in the proper orientation, how you're wanting them, trying to make sure you have the proper airflow going on is going to be pretty vital to your cooling solution. So. Air typically with every fan works this way. If you see the front part here, this is what usually pulls in the air. And then from the back here, this is what blows the air through. Now you can usually find this can kind of get confusing at first, but just look for the little bracketed part that looks like this. This is where the air is going to be coming in. 
Just look for that and you should have a good idea where the air is going to actually be coming from. So you're pulling it in from this side and it's blowing through on this side. So just like you see we have in the case, the air that's actually in the case is going to get sucked in from this side and blow out the back. So keep that in mind when you're trying to set up your orientation. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that here in a second. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our fan orientation here. And you can see here we've got a few different places that look like they may be mounting brackets and well they are. So we've got the bottom here which you can actually mount some fans to. We've got this back part here that we can mount some fans to and we've got this top part here that we can mount some fans to and we're going to be mounting fans to all of them. So typically what you want to do is have if you have the option to mount a fan back here you're going to want to have this is what is known as an exhaust. Now so like I said earlier this back part here is going to dictate where the airflow is going to go so for this one we would have the air being sucked in from the case and being blown out from the back and we would know that from this being right here on this side up against that panel. So we're going to be trying to set up what is known as a positive air pressure and how we're going to be going about this is taking the cool air from outside of the case and bring it in into the case. So how we're going to go about this is we're going to mount these in a way that has this side facing the outside of the case and this side facing inside the case so we would have it in this way. But before we can do that we're going to have to actually remove the dust filter that we have on the bottom and you usually want a dust filter in the way so you don't pull in dust into your case into your components. So how this would actually look is we're going to bring it down here and we have little brackets where we can mount the fans too so it would look something like this but from here we're going to mount these fans to the case but before we do that we're going to go ahead and attach our power so we don't make this harder than it has to be for us and it's just simply sliding that on and pushing it over making sure we have contact now in the spirit of cable management we want to make sure that we have these cables in a certain way that's going to make it easy for us to hide them in the most optimal way so we don't want to mount these fans over on this side with the cable on this side because, well, it's a little bit harder to hide that. So we're going to take advantage of the slots that we have down here and we're going to actually mount it with the cables on this side here. So that's going to look like, well, look like this. Cables on this side and we're going to mount it to the case right here. Now with the fans that you've bought, you should have screws that look something like this should be in little bitty baggies and these are for your fans to mount them to your case. So make sure you're using these and you do want a tight fit on these because you don't want your fans wiggling around. It can cause excess noise and can definitely be annoying. Once you're done with that, go ahead and make sure you put that dust cover right back on there. You don't want to intentionally bring dust into your PC because then parts get dirty and well then they don't cool as good. And if you've done it correctly, you should have your fans in here looking like this. And like I was saying with the power cable, we're going to go ahead and route this back here because cable management is important. And if you can do cable management while you're building, you're going to be in a much better position. Much better. It's going to be much cleaner. It's just what you're going to want to do. And we can tidy that up a little bit more in a bit. Now trying to maintain positive air pressure here, we have a couple of different options that we can go with. Now, as we currently have it, we have one way that air is actually coming into the case. It's coming in from the bottom and we're blowing cool air into the case. Now, and we have one exhaust way currently, which is right here. We're gonna take that cool air and whatever else air is actually in the case created by the, all the other components that are there and it's gonna be pulling that air, pushing it through the radiator and hopefully cooling our CPU. So what I want to do here is try to bring some more cool air into the case and you have a couple different ways that you can go about this. Now, 
I'm going to actually go with another intake at the top. That way I can hopefully get as much cool air going to my CPU as possible because I'm going to be blowing fresh air coming up from this fan right here and it can directly go into this fan and I would like to definitely do the same thing up here with this fan pulling in more cool air from the top and allowing it to directly go to this fan. So hopefully I can get the most cool air possible going to my CPU. And that's going to also help with cooling some of these heat sinks that we see here. Now these things that we have here on the motherboard, these are known as heat sinks. These are going to be like passive cooling thing. And also with our heat spreaders. Now, when you see these memory sticks here, they're usually decorated with different things. These are known as the heat spreaders. If you're not just seeing reg regular PCBs, these are known as heat spreaders to help maintain or regulate the thermals. So if I can get some more cool air coming down on all of this passive cooling stuff here, it can definitely help with keeping cooler air here. Now while we are doing that, we are going to add another exhaust right here. So we're just going to go about doing that by mounting our fan right here and pulling out more hot air that could be given off by some of these passive cooling parts here and just kind of trying to establish more of an airflow. Now we'll get on to more of that here with the particular GPU that we're using today and trying to explain the method in that where this will help. But so this is kind of the orientation that we're thinking about doing here. And you can definitely do something very similar if you have any sort of case that looks like this. Having multiple intakes is not a bad thing to do, guys. Not at all. But you do want to make sure that you are expelling the hot air out of your case in some sort of way. And that's what we're going to be doing here. And we're going to have the opportunity to, to do it here. So just keep that in mind. Before we go ahead and mount these fans to the top, we're going to go ahead and take care of our other exhaust back here because once we do try to put these fans up here, we're going to cut ourselves off too much and we're not going to have enough room to properly route the power cable from this fan up into here and hide it in the best way. So well, again, guys, you want to make sure that you do cable management while you're building it makes it much easier to build in the long run. I promise. It gets a little tedious to do it this way, but you're saving yourself so much time at the very end because it's at the very end that you put everything in there and then you try to do your cable management and everything is in the way and it you end up taking some stuff apart and put it back together. Just avoid that. Cable manage while you build. I recommend you do that. And again, this will be facing outside the case because we are taking the air inside putting it through here and blowing it out of the back of the case. So orientate the power cable in the best way to go ahead and try to cable management. And in this case, this is going to have this one up and out here because we are going to use the same little ports that we've been using for the CPU power. And we'll use those same ports that we have here for the top fan when we go to mount those. So we've got that through, great. So let's go ahead and mount this fan. Okay, that fan is mounted. So we are again doing an intake at the top. So these are going to be facing down in the case. So you should see this part inside the case. We're pulling air inside of it. Again, we're gonna do our cable management have your power cable in the best way possible. So this one's going to be toward the back here because it's going to be closest to our routing point. Okay. We got it how we want it. Okay, all our fans are mounted. We are looking real good. We're getting close to being done with this. All we have left is power supply and well, the graphics card. Okay, so for your power supply, obviously you can see that your power supply has a fan on it. So just keep in mind that that means that it needs to be able to cool itself. And the only way to effectively do that is to have access to fresh air. So when you are mounting your power supply, make sure you're mounting it in a way that it's not going to get choked out. Like if I were to put this thing in this way, 
it's not going to have anywhere to actually get air from and you don't want to do that so make sure when you are mounting your power supply that you put it in there in a way that it can get access to fresh air because it needs it now a few other things to keep in mind with your power supply you need to definitely look at your instructions make sure that you have the proper cables plugged into this thing now for this particular power supply that i have the motherboard which this is the 24 pin motherboard sometimes your power supply cables can look a little weird and well you can see that mine actually takes the 24 pin here and then it has a little four thing so just be familiar with your power supply and how it actually works consult your manual guys that thing can definitely help you out quite a bit i know a lot of people don't like to hear that but guys sometimes you got to look at it and you know in a video like this where i don't have the exact same thing as you you need to be familiar with your particular power supply but make sure you plug it in to your power supply your cables that go to the actual one very snugly get it in there securely if you don't hear a clip then that ain't it now a quick little tip when you are about to install your power supply make sure that you get your cables installed first because depending on what kind of case you're dealing with you could make it very difficult on yourself to get access to plugging your cables in snugly and securely and it can just be a headache and you don't want to deal with that but in that same vein guys make sure that you're only plugging in cables that you're going to actually need such as your motherboard the cables that your gpu needs whether that's one to three or your cpu cables that are already up here because we we ran those through earlier and you know your peripheral cables if you have any additional stuff that's going to need to be powered like a hard drive or a us or a light hub like this one so just make sure that you aren't putting excess cables you're just going to make it more difficult to cable manage and well guys you don't want to do that now when you are plugging up cables you want to make sure you're plugging into the right port usually you'll have some sort of nomenclature that can let you know what goes where here but if that's kind of confusing to you and sometimes they can be look at your manual guys i know i keep saying that but it's just true you want to look at that thing sometimes now with your power supply you should get some screws that look something like this these are going to be what you're going to want to use to mount your power supply to your case should have about four of them that it usually takes and well just get to mount them just going to use these little holes that you see here to mount your power supply to just make sure that you're giving your power supply some fresh air okay so now that we got our power supply mounted all of our cables are hooked up we are literally ready to just plug this stuff into where it goes and put in our gpu but if we want to kind of up the look of stuff sometimes guys you can get some cable extensions that look a little bit nicer than you know these little black cables here and same for our gpu that we have today so we're going to take our motherboard extension cable and we're going to take the clip side and make sure it is facing the side that has the little notch here so we can go ahead and get a secure fit and make sure you plug that in real tight get it in there real firm and then from there we're going to try to route this in a cable management fashion and again this is all so much easier with two hands but you know how else could you really see what I'm doing if I wasn't doing it one-handed? So as you can see, it's looking pretty clean right there. And before we go ahead and do the GPU one, well, we need a place to hook it up to. So we can go ahead and install this GPU real quick and then move on to that extension. All right. So today we're going to be putting the 3080 Ti in here, guys. I know. How dare I have that? Digital. Now all cases do not work the same, but where we're going to be inserting this GPU is going to be this little slot that you see here. This is known as the PCIe 16 slot. And this is where we are going to be, well, plugging in our GPU. It's nothing more than just a simple plug in and screw in type of mechanism here. But in order to get it ready, you need to make sure that you have enough of these little slots out so you have room for your GPU. This particular one is a two slot GPU and you can see that with the 
little screw holes that it has. There's one at the very top and then the one right there. So this is going to be a two slot GPU and we're going to need two slots for it. And we've already got two slots open and out. And if you happen to have needed to make more slots for your GPU, well, guys, it's easy. You can just take your screwdriver and get rid of one of these things here. And then you just pull it out. Now, if you had a three slot GPU, well, now you got three slots available. But this one is a two slot, so I only need two. So guys, it's a big boy, pretty heavy, solid card. But it's real easy, guys. You want to try to make sure that you are allowing these little hooks that are back here to be on the back side, line up everything here, and you can just kind of let it fall in from that point, but you need to make sure that you are lined up with the slot as well. Once you are, you give it a little push. As long as you have the back part sitting like it's supposed to, which we don't at the moment. So you've got it lined up. You can give it a little push and give it a little snap. And we're good. This little latch that you see here, if you've got it all snapped in, it'll actually come up. And from there, it should stop you from just pulling it out now. So if you can't pull it out, now from there, you're gonna want to take some screws that looked very similar to your power supply screws. Usually, you might have little pegs. It looks like this. It just kind of depends with your case, but good chance that they look like this. So go ahead and get some of those screws and screw that boy in. Now, much like we did with the motherboard, we are going to take our cable extension that we have for this GPU, which takes a, an adapter here. This isn't the one that usually comes with this card. The other one's kind of ugly. I don't like it, but we're just gonna plug it in and we're gonna try to round it. So we're plugging it in here. Sure you get the snap and we're going to try to route it to the back where we have little slits down here so we'll get those slits back there is where we're trying to route it and well, you can see them on this side so here is where we can plug in our cable extensions now so we've got our motherboard right here and we've got our GPU right here. So we're going to plug those in. Now, just as a refresher, your GPU cables usually have like a little daisy chain connection thing here. And what you don't want to do is take them, especially with the 3000 series GPU, you don't want to take them and try to daisy chain them both into this. You want to give it its own dedicated cable. So for this one, we have two separate GPU cables, as you can see here. We got two of these guys. We're gonna use one for one. So we're gonna plug those in. Just make sure you match it up with the same amount of ports as you see in the extension and all should be good. Then we're gonna do the same thing that we just did with our GPU, with our motherboard. You're gonna take those cables, you're gonna match them up. Sometimes they're annoying. There we go. So oh, there it is. That's plugged in. Both of our extensions are plugged in. Our motherboard completely has power now. Now what we have to do is we'll hook up our USB hub. So before we go ahead and hook up our fans here, I do want to come back to something because I realized that I didn't talk about it. Now you guys might not be using an M.2 for your build. You might be using an SSD that's small and sleek that looks like this or you might be using the bigger version known as the HDD or the uh, magnetic disk drive that is much bigger than this, but this is going to be very similar. It's going to be the same thing. So this is where these peripheral cables come into. Now, not only do they power this fan hub that looks like this, they also power your disk drives as well. So if you do have an SSD, you need to hook it up to get power to it. 
you will need to use your peripherals and it will take two different cables to actually make this fully functional. Now the one to give it power, which is going to be this one here that comes off of your power supply. You simply just plug it in there. Now it has power, but you also have something else known as a SATA cable. And this is going to be basically just a cable that looks like this. Now you're going to need to plug this up as well. So you'll go ahead and do that. You plug that in and it should snap in for you. And once that's in, this is the end you'll connect to your motherboard. Looks like those little holes right there just under the GPU. So these right here are gonna be where you plug that SATA cable into and you'll just take that little SATA cable, the other end of it and just come down and plug it up. It'll snap in and then you're good. Route it from the back. Just like we were doing all these other cables. And that's how you'll hook up those SSDs or those hard drives if you happen to have them. We don't because we're using the M.2, which I recommend because it's usually faster and there's less cables to deal with. And less cables is always better. Next up, we have the Lee and Lee fan hub. And if you are using this specific hub, there are two connections that you need to be worried about. And it's going to be, well, the power that looks like this peripheral that we just talked about a moment ago and this USB port plug. And I'll show you guys exactly where you plug that into. So those are the main power connectors that you need to be worried about, but to actually make sure they connect to your fan, you have two connections here. And this hub has two different ports here. And this is where you're going to want to make sure you are plugging them into the right connection. So for this one particularly that looks like this, this is what actually powers the fan and makes it turn and spin. So you'll plug that into the right one. These are also known as PWM. And then this, no, that's not the same one. And then this one is the connection that actually allows it to get the light. So those connections will go right by each other and you can plug those in. Now we have one set of our fans ready to go. And then we'll just repeat that process. Now for some of you guys, you might have to hook your fans directly to your motherboard and that's completely fine. You're gonna be looking for a plug that looks something like this. This is going to be known as your fan header. And this is where you would actually plug your fans into. Now, if you don't have a different hub that your fans can go into, you're gonna be looking to install it directly to your motherboard. So just make sure you're looking at your motherboards, you know, directions guys, because it can tell you where all your fan headers are. They also do say fan header in most cases. You just have to get really close to your motherboard. So just keep that in mind. That's also another option for hooking up fans for some of you. Okay, so now once you have everything hooked up, you're good to go. You can start putting on all of your enclosures. Now guys, I would caution you now when you do have everything hooked up, you should definitely try to turn on the system because you don't want to close everything up and realize it didn't come on. Then you got to take everything back apart because you don't know what went wrong. So um, I don't recommend you just close it all up and then try to turn it on, test it first. But I know that I did it right, so I'm going to uh, just slap this on. And guys, yeah, I know I could have done better on the back, but guess what? I don't need to because it's all going to be hidden. We really tidied up the front part and well, you know, this is fine. This is fine. So there you have it. That is how you build a PC. Motherfucker. So that is how you build a PC. Guys, if this video helped you, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and uh, we'll see you.